Bloodborne is a campaign solo and cooperative game. Now I did a tutorial on it and a playthrough of it as well if you wanna dive deeper into Bloodborne, but for those of you who are unfamiliar, it's based on a video game. You're playing as a hunter who's fighting monsters, upgrading gear using tokens gained from those defeated monsters, and battle is pretty much a core mechanic of overall gameplay. For the most part, you are traveling across a randomized city to investigate different mysteries and complete several objectives like rescuing survivors and interacting with parts of the city. Here is what I find fascinating about Bloodborne, the board game. I love the story. It's rich, it's immersive. I think it's a huge selling point for wanting to play the game. I've only played this game solo. I haven't played it cooperatively and I typically don't play games cooperatively anyway. That's my premise. So you kind of know where I'm coming from going into this review. Now, with that said, this is a board game that makes me want to play and dive into to more campaign driven games strictly because of the story. Reading a book is one thing and watching a movie is another, but to kind of merge the worlds of watching, imagining and playing, like physically playing through a story, that's fun. That's really, really fun. And I think it really delivers on that end because I didn't want to stop playing until I find out what happened within the story that I'm literally immersing myself into. So the story is there and the content is there. I also really enjoyed the amount of things that you can do, the amount of actions that you have access to, and they're all tied around discarding one card. You discard a card to start battle. You discard again to go to the hunter's dream. So in that sense, I like how if you break it down, if you break down the overall mechanics, it's very simple. You pay the requirement and then you move or interact or battle. And that plays hand in hand with the story because you're wanting to find out more of what's happening and how the story is unveiling itself. There aren't too many barriers mechanically that can keep you from that. And I'll come back to that when I talk about the negatives of Bloodborne. And the third thing I really liked about this game is the mechanics. It's fun. It's different because no dice are involved. You play a card into your dashboard and then your enemy is going to respond randomly or someone randomly because eventually you kind of know the makeup of the cards that they have access to. You can pretty much choose to know what the enemy will do or you can also keep it random by not paying attention to what cards that they have out already. Now after that, you can still rebuttal by dodging or exchanging attacks. I enjoyed the battle system. I think it makes you think about several different factors all at once and enemies have a limited action pull. So if you want to, like I said, you can still calculate what move they're gonna pull out next. I didn't like that at first, but I think it kind of grew on me because I think the board game was trying to you know, emulate what was done in the video game version. And it made sense because eventually AI's enemies in a video game, you can predict their move because they have like a set pattern, they have a formula and you can start to understand how to respond to them. So translating that video game aspect to the board game version, I thought it was really cool. I thought it was really smart on Simon's part to, to do that. And even if I didn't really like it at first, it did grow on me. So overall battle is fun, it's unique and I liked it. Now moving on to the issues that I had with Bloodborne. Let's start with the biggest one first. To be honest, I don't like harking on rulebook issues as much as I've done it before, as much as I will probably continue to do it. And the reason why I also don't like harking on them because it's easy for me to just sit here and bash on the rulebook, but I know there's a ton of time and effort spent into making a game and this is the heart of the game, you know, but when that heart isn't beating properly, what can you do? It just makes it hard to enjoy a game that I want to enjoy and to make content around it. The rulebook has a ton of issues, but they're all tied around two main things. The lack of mentioning something or making it transparent, and it's open to interpretation. Rules ideally shouldn't be interpreted in multiple ways. Here's an example. When the rules talk about how to win or lose the hunt, the story that you're on, it says that if the hunt track has reached its final space, the players will have one final round to win the game. But then at the end of the rulebook, it says the final space of the hunt track has a reset point. When the final space is reached, reset the map. So then you ask, well, do I take a turn or does everything get reset? I'll give one more example. Enemies activate and follow you once you finish your turn. So in one part of the rulebook on enemy activation, it says that all enemies on the hunter's tile or on tiles connected to it are within activation range. But as you're revealing tiles, practically every tile that you reveal has to connect to the previous tile, which begs the question, so do enemies always activate? And then you find out later with some Googling and watching other much better content creators that I've been learning from that you have to be on the same tile on the enemy first. This could have been clarified within the same sentence, within the same section that rule was mentioned. And like I said, that's kind of the theme of the rule book. It's just 
missing information is just open to a ton of interpretation. So if you do plan on learning this game, please check out what everyone's been posting on uh, BGG, Board Game Geek. There's a ton of helpful stuff there, as always, on Board Game Geek from other users that will make your gameplay experience much easier when trying to learn the game. Now, aside from the rules, in terms of the game itself, I wanted to mention two other things regarding gameplay. It's very, very difficult. I played this game four times and I won once. In the first chapter of The Long Hunt, that's the very first thing you do in the game. It's the very first campaign. I don't mind challenges. It makes it more fun, it makes it more rewarding once you actually complete a challenging aspect of a game. But one of my friends on Instagram, uh, Mike from At Sword and Board Games, who, by the way, if you're watching Mike, you, sir, have been one ginormous influence in getting me into solo games, so thank you. But Mike mentioned a great point, and that's, that's this. In a video game, if you die, or if you lose, one click, boom, you are back into your original spawn point. In a board game, it doesn't work like that. It's not that easy. You have to set up everything all over again, and especially for campaign-driven games, you have to get your campaign cards all back in numbered order, putting your tokens back into the original piles, taking out cards you upgraded in your deck so you have your base deck of cards again. It is daunting to have to reset, but it's a very hard game. So I think for the most part, from my experience, you will lose and you will have to reset everything to re-strategize your game plan. Resetting in a board game, much, much different, or at least much more daunting than the video game version. And lastly, this one is more so for me, rules aside, resets aside, I still really enjoy this game. But this is why I said I have mixed feelings about it. After taking a lot of time, just mulling over my thoughts, kind of thinking about, you know, why or what is keeping me away from opening the game and playing again is the progression system. For me, it doesn't feel rewarding, or at least it doesn't feel as rewarding as it should to motivate you to play again. If you defeat a monster, you get a token. And you have to use that token pretty quickly because if you die, you lose that currency. And when you go to the Hunter's Dream, it advances the timer up by one. So essentially, you are already limited on the hunt track. It goes up twice for ending the turn and for visiting the Hunter's Dream. So time ticks real fast. And if you choose to go upgrade your weapon and go to the Hunter's Dream on your own to spend those tokens before you lose it, it goes up twice as fast. Then what you spend that currency on is a card that gets randomly shuffled into your 12 card maximum deck, essentially being bits to improve your overall deck. And sometimes that card that you gain doesn't always function as a permanent bonus because you sometimes just discard it completely to just move two spaces. So I would have preferred a player board with a permanent stat bonus that you can invest in or spend the tokens on. Instead of having to just replace your cards with better ones, I think what would have easily pulled me back into Bloodborne was having a board with more than just one way to spend your blood echoes. Maybe it just gives me a plus one bonus to strength as I attack monsters going forward in the campaign. And then there could be one for improving your movement. So three spaces instead of two spaces. You know, one lets you carry multiple weapons. By having the progression system only be replace your card with another one, that gets randomly shuffled into a deck, it doesn't feel like you've accomplished much and it's a little underwhelming. It's like, dang, I just spent five turns and discarded 15 cards. Now I can replace three of those cards from my deck. You know, but to end on a good note, I do like the game. I do think it's worth a shot playing. It's a fantastic story. It has really fun battle mechanisms. Of course, beautiful production value come from Simon. And that leads to my overall rating for this game. I'm gonna give it a three. Highlights for me are definitely battle mechanics. Story is a big one. And player choices starting from something as simple as discarding one card, but branching that into a ton of things that you can do from that one discard mechanic. What's keeping it away from a five is definitely the rulebook for one. And secondly is the progression system. It's a good game. I think it's worth trying before diving into all the expansions, especially if you are a fan of Bloodborne, if you enjoy campaign games, if you like games surrounded with battle, and I'm sure if you like co-ops, then this one definitely might be one worth looking into. That is my take on Bloodborne. I hope you enjoyed that along with the new rating scale that I think I've done twice now. I'm gonna implement this going forward. Let me know what your thoughts are about this game. Comment down below whether you are interested in buying this game, whether you played it already, what you just, what you overall think about this game. Okay, thanks for watching and I'll see you all in the next video.